Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm reviewing an interesting piece of rolling stock from the Second World War. The other month I launched my insane Uncle Fredrickson's balancing tank wagons, which were a lot of fun but ultimately fictional but it did put me in the mood for reviewing perhaps some slightly more realistic tank carrying vehicles. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're not looking at a war well, but this time a war flat. So this is the Bachmann 50 ton war flat wagon, which was released in 2019. And as you can also see, this has a tank on board, which I believe is a Cromwell tank. Now, unlike the war wells that I've reviewed on this channel, this model is very expensive. The latest price for the Hatton's War Wells was £25. This is more than double at RRP at least, at £57.95. So either this is a lot more expensive, or the inclusion of the tank has caused the price to almost double. Fortunately though, I managed to find this on sale. I bought this from Kerno, I think it was, for £34.99, which I think is a bit more reasonable. If we take the wagon to be the same price as the war well, that adds about a tenner for the tank. So actually I'm quite happy with that. So let's see what this is like. It's a reasonably modern wagon from Bachmann. Interesting because of the World War II aspect. So let's take a look and let's see what this is like. And if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, I do have some affiliate links in the description. Okay, here we go. And I have to say, I think the inclusion of the tank was a really good idea for this model. Not only does it make it more realistic and complete, but it also makes it much more interesting. I can't say that I would have bought this if it didn't have the tank on it. I just don't think it would have caught my eye. So yeah, props to Backman for that. That was a great shout. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the product code for the version I've got is 38-725. It's the War Flat Bogey Flat Wagon in the War Department Khaki Drab with tank. And uh, yeah, it's a Cromwell Mark IV, I believe. Anyway, let's open this up and let's see what it's like. I'm interested to see how the tank is fixed to the wagon. Is it removable? Is it poseable? I don't know. We'll find out. But there it is. Yeah, looking good. No instructions, I just checked. So let's see what we get. Oh, actually, hang on, the accessories are underneath. So I better pop the lid back on. So no instructions, so we don't actually have any guidance for fitting these accessories. And looking at them, yeah, it's not dreadfully obvious where this stuff would go. I can recognize some of the parts, such as the buffer beam pipe work and the screw link couplings, which is an awesome inclusion. I really like to see that. But these other parts, not too sure. I have read about these wagons having jacks. They look a little bit like jacks maybe, but I'm not too sure. So yeah, a little slip of instructional material would not have gone amiss there, unless it's obvious when I get the thing out. But uh, you do have to spell these things out for people, don't you? Especially me. All right, here we go. For the second time, let's lift the lid and let's carefully pull this thing out. Hopefully the tank is actually fixed on. Oh, no, no, it's not. Oh, it's moving. Wow. So let's have a look at the wagon to start with, which actually is decently heavy. The construction of it does seem to be plastic, which is in stark contrast with the war well. But then underneath, we've got the sort of chassis hidden underneath the plastic body, which does seem to be metal. And in fact, yeah, the weight of this really isn't that bad here. Yeah, decently heavy, but otherwise a relatively simple wagon from a detail point of view. Let's have a look at the tank then, which, yeah, is a very, very light and plasticky tank. Uh, interestingly, it's got magnets on the bottom, so I guess then it will actually stick onto the wagon which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it's it's okay. It's very, very cheap and plasticky feeling, sort of uh, pound landy sort of feel to it. Uh, let me put that turret back on because it's not actually stuck on. Um, yeah, not something that I would say is really worth more than a couple of pounds. Yeah, really, really light. But let's see if it sticks onto the wagon. Yes, it does. And it seems to stick anywhere in the sort of center of the wagon which is pretty good. But uh, yeah, if you put it in the middle, that's how it looks. So very interesting. Let's have a bit of background on these wagons in real life. And then we'll take a close look and I'll show you the level of detail. 
The 50-ton war flat wagons were used by the War Department during the Second World War. Built by Metropolitan Camel Carriage and Wagon Company in 1940, they were created especially for the transport of tanks, not only in Britain but elsewhere in Europe too. The design actually dated back to the First World War with the LMWR Parrot wagons, which looked very similar. The war flats were kind of an update to this wagon with higher loading capacities and lifting jacks fitted. Following the war, surplus wagons moved into British Railways ownership where they were reconditioned and then reused. So there it is up close and personal for you, the Bankman war flat complete with the Cromwell tank. And yeah, it's all right. The model itself is absolutely fine. It's pretty simple, but it looks good. The tank though is pretty poor quality. It's very light and plasticky. And while it does look okay from a distance, up close, it's really not that great. And I do question the full price of this because at nearly 60 pounds, I'm left wondering what on earth costs so much about this. The price I paid of 34 pounds 99, I thought that was a bargain, but actually I'm glad I didn't pay any more than that because anything else would have been a rip off in my opinion. So in terms of the weight, it's reasonably heavy actually at 103 grams, but that's actually exactly the same weight as the Hatton's Warwell, which obviously doesn't have a tank. And this tank is incredibly light, 17 grams, which is very light for the size of it, which leaves 88 grams for the wagon itself. So it doesn't compare favorably with the 25 quid Hatton's Warwell, which is almost entirely made of metal, by the way. But the weight is absolutely fine on this, you know, over 100 grams, it's not gonna have a problem. It's just really the price that I question. Anyway, let's take a look at the level of detail. Let's start with the decoration. So we've got the deck, which is separately painted on the wall flat. And then we've got the side of the wagon, which has quite a bit of painted decoration. So we've got the running number on there. We've got some other printed text. And as usual from Backman, this all looks great. In terms of the detail itself, we've got some nicely molded bogies, as you can see. Yeah, you can see the springs and the axle boxes. They look great. We do have this turning wheel, which is separately fitted on the side of the body, although these little rings are just a part of the molding. The molding is good, but they aren't separately fitted. The underframe is pretty basic too, again, compared with the Hatton's war wells. Got a little bit of brake rigging down here, but not a lot to speak of. We have got metal buffers on this model, but they are not sprung. Again, happy to see that feature missed off for the right price, but do bear in mind the Hatton's Warwell, which I'm talking about yet again, did have sprung buffers and it was much cheaper. It is the tank though that is the worst aspect of this model by far. I think this is the cheapest and nastiest object that I've ever seen from Backman, which is saying quite a lot. So the plastic feels so thin and cheap and in places you can see where the light has shone through it. Really not a good look. It's covered in visible glue above the caterpillar tracks on top of the turret and in plenty of other places, really, really messily put together. There's scarring all over it from where it's either been caught at the factory or perhaps cut from sprues. Again, none of this has been tidied up, which is quite shocking. And the quality of the molding is exceptionally poor. The rivets, where there are rivets, look awful. And as a centerpiece of a model that cost nearly 60 pounds at the full price, it is absolutely unforgivable. A really nasty piece of work. It does have some decent decoration on it, which I suppose is a good thing. And the wheels and the tracks themselves do look good. The molding is actually decent on there. Otherwise, a really nasty object, put to shame actually by Oxford Rail and the tank that they included on their war well, which was 10 times better than this. So there you have it, a basic wagon, not a lot going on here, very confusing for the price, but the wagon itself looks very good, nothing wrong with that, it's well made, it's just the tank that is a little bit naff on this. So with that, let's get this down onto the track, let's see how it performs and check that everything about it works as it should. So here is today's test setup. As a locomotive, I've chosen the Robinson 04, which I reviewed not long ago. And this was associated with both World Wars. So in the l &ER livery here, that makes it well suited to this kind of era. Then of course, we got the war flat, which I'll test in just a second. As you can see, it wants to move. So that's a good sign. And then behind it, we've got other war wells from Oxford and Hattons and a brake fan at the back. So in terms of free rolling, this wagon does not have any separate bearings on it. 
which is normally what you expect to see these days when a model costs as much as this does. So as much as the separate bearings would have been better quality, this hasn't negatively affected how free rolling this is. So on the Gordons Hill rolling test, it was fantastic. Started rolling very early, got up to a great speed and made it way down to the bottom of the hill. That's way above average, I would say. So no bearings, but perfectly free rolling. So you could put a decent rake of these together if you wanted to. And your locos like this one should be able to haul it quite easily. Right, in terms of couplings, well, they're not kinematic or pivoting in any way. They are just fixed onto the bogies. So if you're on curves, you might struggle to couple, but otherwise it should be okay. So let's back up and let's see how we get on. Do this nice and steady. Yep, that coupling seemed to work. Let's go back a bit further. And yeah, that seemed to work as well, although the Oxford coupling hook lolled to one side, so I'll just adjust that. There we go. So that is the train complete. Let's get it started and let's see how it gets on around the track. Here we go. All right, here we go. Coupled as part of a train. Let's see if it's got any issues. Second radius. No. And that's no surprise, Bankman's stuff, expensive as it is, tends to work perfectly. It tends to be solid, and this does seem to be. So there you go, no problem at all around the track. And like I say, this is a wagon that, while under close inspection, is quite embarrassing because of the tank. From a distance, it looks absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the tank from a distance. It does the job, and it doesn't look any worse, really, than the Oxford one. But then again, you know, you're paying probably over £50 normally for one of these, and you would expect a little bit better than just OK from a distance. So, yeah, it is quite disappointing in that sense, but otherwise very few complaints. Performance top-notch, the wagon itself is absolutely fine. So if this is within your interest, and you can find it at a decent discount like I did, then yeah, I could totally recommend this. If you're paying somewhere in the mid-30s for this, I think the absolute naffness of the tank is something you could overlook. Um, whether this is available without the tank, I'm not sure. I've not actually seen it without the tank. But, you know, if they could knock off however much the tank is worth and sell the wagon on its own, then that might be a more viable option. But then again, it is the tank that really drew me to this in the first place, so maybe that's not something they'd want to do. Anyway, better check the performance of this over the points. So. Usual caveats apply, if anything other than the Bankman Warflat derails, then obviously that's no reflection on the Warflat, but if we get a full house, that's even better. So open up the points, and let's go for it. There it goes now. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no problem at all. Alright, perfect performance then. No issues with couplings, no issues with curves or points. So I think I'm satisfied with that. I think we can give it five stars on performance. And speaking of ratings, let's do some of those now. So the thing with this is that the very high price of this wagon set certain high expectations. Expectations that this would perhaps be better and have more features than the Warwells from Hattons and Oxford Rail. The fact that it was more expensive and had fewer features than them was quite surprising to me and not a good look for Backman. So the level of detail I've given three and a half star. On the plus side, the molded detail on the wagon is absolutely fine. The decoration is top notch. Presentation, no problem with that at all. It doesn't have sprung buffers though. The little rings are just molded as is most of the detail. And the brake rigging and underframe is not as complex as we saw on the Hatton's Warwell. So I've given it a middle of the road three and a half star. Performance, I cannot fault though. So to be fair to this, I'm gonna give it five star. Perfect performance at all times. Absolutely no way to fault it. Let's talk about quality then, which is tricky because the quality of the wagon was good, but the quality of the tank was bad. In fact, worse than bad, terrible. So again, I've given this two and a half star middle of the road. The wagon is decently heavy, it's got a die cast chassis and it's put together very nicely with no visible glue and no scuffs in the decoration, all of that perfect. The tank is quite the opposite, cheap plastic construction, badly cut from sprues, moulding marks all over it, poor moulding at that, 
visible glue and the thing came apart the moment I tried to twist the turret. So yeah, two and a half star middle of the road is the best I can do. Value for money then, £57.95 is the RRP. I think given the simplicity of the wagon and the poor quality of the tank, that is just a joke. Really taking the mick with that price. The price I paid is a lot better, £34.99. That is what this thing is worth at most, in my opinion. That would be four star. So I'll split the difference and give it two and a half star. Compare this with the Oxford Warwell wagon with the tank. The RRP is £43.95 for that, and Oxford's tank is die-cast, meaning that the wagon and the tank together are actually heavier than Backman's here, yet that is £14 cheaper, so I think I'm very justified in knocking the value mark down here. Overall then, that is a score of 6.21 out of 10, or a grade of E, mainly let down by the tank and the high price. Without the tank, it's a good but overpriced wagon, with the tank, it becomes a slight embarrassment. All right, folks, well, that will just about do it for this review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, overall, I would say I do like this wagon and I can see me using it. I just uh, don't like the price so much and I certainly don't like the tank. Yeah, it feels like the kind of thing you'd win at a fair and not pay a fortune to Backman for. But other than that, yeah, it's absolutely fine. At least it works well. That's another major plus. And like I say, from any sort of distance, it does look absolutely fine. But let me know what you think about this. Have you tried one of the Backman War Flats or perhaps the Parrot Wagons? What did you think to it? What kind of price did you pay? And what kind of price do you think would be reasonable for something like this? I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say. But for now, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you again very, very soon for another review. All right. Cheers, folks. You take care.